Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today, one of my favorite topics actually, we will enrich categories to monoidal categories. Or really what I would like to uh, keep in mind is that this is really the picture of monoids categorified. It's not monoids in categories, that's slightly different. It's not monoids in endofunctors, that would be monads that we have seen. It's a slightly different point of view, um, kind of a higher point of view that we will take today. And the picture what I would like to keep you in mind is, so let's just jump right into it, the following. So on this side here, we have uh, kind of this column of categories and sets. So in some sense, categories categorify, whatever categorify means, the very wake here, so, so as a notion, um, they categorify sets. So instead of having sets, which is sets, you now have categories, which have kind of nice morphisms between them. It's kind of a richer structure. Kind of, if you want, then the objects in this category, uh, then you recover this this one here, right? So, kind of the objects of categories, they are, they are like sets. If you kind of ignore the arrows between everything, then things behave really set like. In this sense, it categorifies this picture here. Okay, so let's have a look at the right hand column. So, and in the row picture, so what you would like to do here is in the row picture, well, maybe not taking categorify here. Um, you can enrich sets, of course. So sets is just the starting point of the huge story of mathematics in general. And let's say you can enrich sets into monoids, which are sets with a certain operation, right? So sets, just plain sets, and monoids, sets plus an operation. So I enrich my setup. And yeah, well, you might ask, uh, actually, what is the analog here? So if you believe this strategy that, uh, or the philosophy, the category are kind of a higher point of view on sets, right? Sets are the sets and categories kind of have all those arrows between them. And you might wonder, how can I enrich categories such that on the other side, I get whatever I would like to see here, um, whatever I would like to put here that categorifies then the notion of a monoid, right? So this kind of monoids are special cases of sets if you want, or it's kind of enriched sets, sets plus an operation. So whatever I put here in my question mark box on the um, north east corner of my little diagram here, it, whatever it is, it should be an enriched version of a category. That's what I would like to would like to discuss today. Was so what completes the square? And of course, the title of this uh, video is uh, monoidal categories. So whatever completes the square will be monoidal categories. So monoidal categories are really kind of categorifications of monoids. And, in this sense. We'll see actually in a second what it really means. Okay, so um, what is the point here? Well, if you look at this table again, so I have one of my favorite ever pictures on um, Wikipedia stolen, of course, linked, uh, linked to everything in the description. Then a category, so they call it the small category, they, they care about set theory, I discuss them or don't, whatever. It really, really looks very, very similar to a monoid. That's kind of the point. So monoids should have always nice counterparts in categories, whether it is via monads, for example, is for monads or monoids in categories, or what we would like to do today is different. It's actually the higher perspective, the categorification of monoids. There should be always some kind of nice picture. And I really would like to stress here that we are not doing the mon monads uh, setup. We are not doing mono mon monoids in categories, which is again, something different. They're just some kind of similar in nature. What I'm really up for is the categorification of this whole picture, which means I need two operations. Why do I need two operations? Because my category already, as you, as you all know, here I already have the category operation. I can compose things. Here I just don't have anything, it's just nothing. Here I can already compose things. So whatever I do here, it's on the same on the same letter height, right? So I should still be able to compose morphisms. But here I actually have a multiplication operation. And whatever I then categorify, I would like to have a multiplication operation as well. So I really want two operations here, which is um, kind of different from having something similar, like a monad. The monad just had one operation. I really would like to have two operations, one of them being the categorical operation and one of them being the monoidal operation, which I would like to define in the end. And yeah, well, let's have a look at monads again. Uh, so no, 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 monads, monoids again. So the picture for monoids is of course this one, 
So I hope by now you uh, like the string diagram notation and it kind of makes sense. So you have a multiplication and you have a unit operation and they satisfy the usual axioms like associativity and identity. In other words, um, if you just want to write it down in formulas, you have a set. That's what is a mo mon monoid, ah, monad, monoid, monad, monad. What is a monoid? Uh, well, it's a set with a multiplication. And we want to kind of, kind of categorize this multiplication and the unit operation such that associativity, something holds, some, some axioms hold uh, associativity and unit in this case, right? So we have this setup, a set, a multiplication, a unit, such that associativity and um, identity holds. And this is kind of now easy to categorify. Well, in some sense it is because I know the answer, but of course this was a brilliant idea to begin with, uh, based on as everything in category theory, based on plenty of examples. I'll show you plenty on examples on the next, maybe not plenty, but at least some examples on the next slide. So what is now a monoidal category? It has quite a bit of input, which I'm going to discuss in more details in, in the strictification video, which is the next one on the category playlist. Uh, so after this one, but now let's focus on the main points here. So I, of course, before I had a set, so let's have a look, I had a set and we are not doing set theory. So I would like to have a category. Okay, so a monoidal category should be a category, right? That kind of makes sense. And there's a bifunctor and bifunctor just means it kind of has a nice properties that you would expect it to be like a, like a bilinear form or something. And you usually write it, either you kind of drop that notation, right? In, in the monoid, you might want to write G times F or you just simplify it to GF. And I'm kind of doing the same here. Um, there's usually it's denoted by this tensor product symbol, the symbol of a, squ uh, of a square a very nice square of a circle with a cross inside. But I sometimes like to drop that actually, for example, on the remainder of this slide, kind of implicitly understood that there is a multiplication symbol somewhere. So there's a factor, uh, which is called the monoidal factor. And the factor means you can also do this operation on the arrows, not just on the, on the object as I have written it here on the slide. No, no, this operation also works for the arrows, right? It's a categorification of the uh, picture of having a, a, a monoid. And yeah, sure, it was a multiplication on this slide, but we also had the unit, my unit operation here. And yeah, so there's a unit and the unit should now be an object. So a unit object in my category. And then you would like to have, I'm not going to explain those too much, but you would like to have associativity and some unitality conditions. As you can see, this is kind of unitality. So the unit from the left, so lambda is for left, is just an isomorphism. And the unit from the right is just an isomorphism. You can get rid of them, right? So it's something like uh, g times one is g is one times g. And of course I've swapped it now, but anyway, so left and right unitality. And similarly for um, the isomorphism for associativity. So x, y, z in one bracketing is equivalent to x, y, z in the other bracketing up to certain conditions that need to hold that I will discuss in more details in the next um, video. But basically, these are the analogs that you would write, like to write down for associativity and unitality of the operation, right? So you have, a, in this case, you have a pentagon equality and you have a triangle equality. So this is associativity, this is asso, um, and this is the identity of corresponding identity. And it's the commutativity of a certain type of diagram, right? So here you have basically the diagram of all bracketings of four symbols. And here you kind of can get rid of the, of the unit whenever it's stuck in the middle of uh, those expressions. And then you have uh, the definition of a monoidal category. It's really just categorifying this picture here. Um, this is relatively simple. This needs a little bit more explanation, which I postpone to uh, the strictification part. So which will be the next video, as I said. So otherwise it's really the same, a category and now you have an operation which works, I said again, important on objects and morphisms, which people usually denote by a by this funny tensor product type symbol. And yeah, the, the main the main example is of course the tensor product in vector spaces. Um, so um, so here are some examples. So in sets, for example, um, the monoidal structure is here. I don't like to write down the units. The unit is usually really easy. So in this case, for example, it's K. 
as soon as you, have, you know what the monoidal structure is. In this case, it's a one point set. So in the category of sets, product does, uh, the cross product. In the category of categories, the cross product does. In some nice diagram categories, I will discuss this in a second, uh, whether it's one dimensional or n dimensional in vector spaces. Um, that's kind of the main uh, example here. It should be the tensor product. So think about the tensor product as being the blueprint example of a, of a monoidal structure. But um, I should remind you that it's exactly the same as with monoids. So a certain set can have different structures of a monoid. And here, a category can have different structures as a monoidal category. And actually, you can check fun exercise that the direct sum also gives you a, a monoidal structure on, on vector spaces, which is a little bit funny. People usually don't use it. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't say anything else about it. But anyway, it's really the same as for monoids. One set can have several structures of a monoid. One category can have several structures of a monoidal category. So to be completely precise, what you usually should say is it's not a monoidal category, but it's a monoidal category with this structure, right? It's really actually people usually don't do that anymore. But you really need to tell me this whole uh, whatever it is, six tuple of entries. So the category, the product, the unit, and all those funny maps isomorphisms down here. It's really might might be different, right? You really might end up for different choices with really different structures. Whenever I certainly, whenever people usually talk about vector spaces, this is the standard one, and the other one is more like a, a, a funny cousin, which you should be aware that it exists, but we usually don't don't use it. Anyway, so um, monoidal products. Actually, I will uh, cover this also in a se separate video. I'm just postponing everything to the future. I'm, I'm such a lazy person. Um, anyway, um, monoidal categories actually are really two dimensional. So if you want, then in a monoid, multiplication is some operation that kind of happens on the line, if you want. And now we have an, also the categorical proposition, which happens well on another line, but perpendicular. So a monoidal category with two operations, the product, the, the, the usual product and the product with a, with a cross inside, gives you two operations in, in two directions. And you can see this very nicely um, on the cobordism picture. So in cobordisms, you actually have a monoidal structure and it's really, really simple. It's just this juxtaposition of diagrams. So whenever I have diagram A and whenever you have diagram B, you can just put them next to one another and consider them as one diagram. So this is this operation now stacking in, in this direction. So I should really say this is a product and this is a composition. So we are stacking in this direction and we can, um, as we have explained that in previous videos, right? We are stacking those pictures in this direction to get the other operation. And then you can kind of see that this whole ca diagram calculus here is two-dimensional in nature now with a monoidal structure being this just co composing things, just put A next to B. So it's kind of nice. And you can easily check that all the axioms are satisfied. And what could be the unit of the setup? Well, it's the empty the empty manifold, right? The empty manifold. If you put the empty manifold next to any manifold, you will not change anything, of course. Anyway, that's it for now about monoidal categories. We will stay with monoidal categories for quite a while. This is really nice because in the end, what I would like to sell you, that this was just a, just a the, the primer on a two-dimensional version of algebra, which is pretty cool. And maybe you can already kind of see the two dimensions, right, if you consider uh, one of the operations goes in one direction. You really have a second operation. I should stress that it's different from the monad picture. You have a second operation, and I like to stress that again. And now we really have a two-dimensional calculus. You can go in this direction, or you can go in this direction, which is really, really nicely illustrated by the cobordism category, right? So that's the point about monoidal categories. In the end, they categorify monads, uh, not monads, they categorify mo monoids, Really, really hard to distinguish monads and monoids. They category from mo monoids, and but because now you have already a category, so there is already an operation. You get a second one, and now you really have a two-dimensional way of uh, calculating this two-dimensional version of algebra. Uh, whatever. I hope you like pictures. I hope you like this illustration of or this uh, idea of having a two-dimensional calculus. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, of course. And I hope to also hope to see you next time.